I'm glad that I look relaxed because that's not what's going on on the inside ever. And I'm really, really excited to open the event today, mainly because it is before 11 a.m. on a Saturday and I'm already wearing a pop star mic. So, you know, but you will be really pleased that I'm not about to break into a Taylor Swift style uh, concert. The real reason that I'm really excited about it is because I just love the concept of this, of this event. Bright ideas. You know, from my perspective as a mayor, we need more of them. We need them in the region. We've got so many bright ideas. We've got bright people. We've got talent. We've got pride. We're bursting with it. That is who we are as a region. And as Herb said, I am the first Northeast mayor. And so for my part, you know, part of my job is to keep that in the region, to keep that talent and to keep those ideas and not just to have them as ideas but actually to help them become a reality because you know growing up the way that I did in the West End of Newcastle in a working class household it is definitely a fact that talent is classless talent is placeless ideas are the same but opportunity isn't always and so I stood on a platform of making this region the home of real opportunity. And I think this is a big part of what we're trying to do. We need to take these ideas, of course. I want them to have a home in the region. But we want the ideas from this region to, to go global. And I'm pretty sure we're going to hear a little bit about some of that from our speakers today. We want to see them on television. We want to see them in the boardroom. We want to see them in the art and the creativity and the academia. We want to see that reflected globally, but always knowing that the people who have great ideas and you know, come up with great concepts and inventions will always have a home in this region. As Herb said, I was lucky enough uh, to be one of the speakers at uh, TEDx Newcastle last year. Now, that is a, a, is a, a stressful experience, I'm not going to lie. Um, but it, it was also a really enlightening experience because from every single one of those talks that were all so different, all so broad, some of them really scientific, some of them really creative, uh, some of them you know, just about the ability to solve a Rubik's Cube in a record amount of time, but completely fascinating. And you take a little bit from every single one of them. And I I talked about identity and I talked about pride because those are the things that I really um, resonate with and I, I really care about. Uh, and I talked about the fact that our northern identity, our northeast identity is a driver for people to stay in this region. The fact that people choose this northeast life, they choose this place and why wouldn't they? Look at it. You saw that beautiful video of Durham just up there on the screen and we have bundles of that landscape, you know, that fantastic balance, the cities, the coast the countryside, but also the ideas and the innovation. But sometimes people are punished for choosing this northeast life. They don't always get the opportunities that they deserve. We don't always get the credit that we deserve or, or, the, um, or the hearing that we deserve for the fact that we're such a fantastic place. Because whilst we are very proud, we're also extremely modest. And we see it all the time, don't we? We see it grim up north, we see sometimes the media will put a negative spin on this place, and we've really got to bust that myth, as far as I'm concerned, because without this region, we wouldn't have had the light bulb, which I think is the emblem for today. We wouldn't have had trains. You know, we wouldn't have literally been the engine powering the world, building the ships, sending them out globally. We wouldn't have some of the best video games. Now, I know nothing about this, but some of you will. But the best video games uh, in the world, we wouldn't have some of the most cutting-edge green technology that is now driving and powering a new generation uh, across the world. And so the idea of staying, of pride of place, of choosing this area for me is something that needs to be embraced. It's something that needs to be harnessed. We need to harness that talent in our region. Uh, but we also deserve the opportunity to make more of our own decisions. And so, you know, for me, devolution is the big idea uh, that will drive the next phases. And you heard Herb talk about what it's done for Manchester, and I think it's what 
we can do for the North East to fundamentally change the way we do government so that all of you can have more of a say over your own future. And who doesn't want more of that? Because we are so much better equipped than Westminster to make our own decisions. And that's the idea that, as your mayor, I'll take forward. Uh, and that's the big idea that, that I want to develop and one of the reasons that I'm so attracted to this. Because in order to make that work, uh, we need these great fundamental ideas that come from this region because we need to be able to invest in them and we need to be able uh, to make them a reality, to take those best ideas and, and turn them into the best of what our region is all about. And other places have progressed. Manchester has progressed. London has progressed. But we are catching up. Uh, and hopefully there'll be an awful lot more to say about that in the future. Now I'm a politician and I have uh, no qualms about taking my ideas from a whole range of people and so one of the things that we talk about an awful lot through my team is the infrastructure of opportunity and that phrase was coined by Fiona Hill who is the Chancellor of Durham University. She's a Durham lass. She has a very similar background to me growing up in the region. She's from a pit village. You know, I'm the daughter of a, a, of a shipyard uh, worker. You know, we politicians like to talk about what our dads did. Um, probably don't talk about what our mums did enough. Uh, for what it's worth, mine did a variety of kind of low-paid, part-time uh, jobs, much like many women do today, and that's something else that we need to change. But Fiona talks about that infrastructure of opportunity. And I love that phrase because for me, again, it has to be about making it a reality. It has to be about jobs. It has to be about transport. It has to be about skills training. It has to be about how you know, we give these people who grew up in this region the opportunities uh, that they deserve and make them into a reality. And more devolution will help us uh, to do that. And it's about not just the infrastructure of opportunity, and but also the infrastructure of ideas as well, of sharing that lived experience, listening to people who know an awful lot about their topic, listening to people who just want to share their views, and giving, us the, uh, the giving ourselves the space and the permission to think big. Thinking about that is a necessity, not just a luxury, as it too often is in our busy lives. And we can see that oftentimes in the community responses to adversity. You know, we see it in things like sure start models and things like breakfast clubs. These are ideas that came from communities doing things themselves that were then adopted by politicians and made into policy. And my word, do they really, really work? And that, I think, is how we need to take the things from today. We're going to hear ideas about education. We're going to hear ideas about uh, about trends in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the future. We're going to hear ideas about science. There's bits of this that we can turn into the policy that will really make a difference uh, for the rest of our lives. And I think I said, you know, my dad worked on the shipyards. And, you know, it's funny, during my election campaign, which is not that long ago, uh, it feels like a lifetime ago, but it's not that long ago, my team said, why don't you take your dad to the shipyard he used to work on? Because now it's kind of a big center for green energy down on the Tyne. And I was like, oh, God, this is going to be so cringy. He's going to hate it, but he's going to do it for me anyway, because, you know, your dad will do what you want him to do, won't he? And I tell you what, he loved it. He absolutely loved it. He has that pride in that, um, in that, that skill that he had in the product that we used to create and we sent out into the world. And he talked with such passion about how everybody used to come down the bank in the morning. He said, you know, we were like ants coming down the bank. And he was talking to us. And he just looked over at the center uh, where we're creating all of the green energy infrastructure for the future. And he said, you know what? It's the same skills. It's the welders, it's the painters, it's the panel beaters, it's the cablers. He said it's the same skills that we once had. And although we don't often think now about our parents and the next generation, well, we do. Our next generation don't think about that sort of totemic, uh, identity-driven profession. And that's probably a good thing because we want kids to grow up with broad ideas. We want them to have dreams and visions. But at the same time, we want them to think that the, the, the jobs of the future are for them because this region is powering the ideas of the future in green energy. We are a natural home for it. We are a place where that will develop, but too many kids just don't see it as their future. And so when I talk about the infrastructure of opportunity and the infrastructure of ideas, what I really want to see is us giving kids the, the agency, the opportunity, the skills training available to them so that they can see those totemic 
uh, skills of the future, those opportunities as choices that they can make and as choices that they can make in this region. And so some of those ideas that we're going to need for our future are going to come from this room. They're going to come from the people here in the audience. They're going to come from the speakers. They're going to come from people like you. But from my point of view, people like me need to match our ambition and our pride with the investment and the backing and you know, the, the politics to really make it happen. And so I think it's fantastic that right here in the center of Durham today, we're having a gathering of ideas, you know, some of the best and brightest from our region and beyond uh, on this stage, sharing them with you. And I just want you to know that for as your mayor, I back those ideas. You know, I back the fact that this is what we're doing and we need to really lean into them so that we can create that opportunity for the future of this great place. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can I ask you a question? Of course you can. can ask me okay, a great. Yeah, no Fabulous. Uh, I guess, you know. This is always the most worrying part. Isn't don't it? worry, don't <laughs> worry. I won't be asking you about. Well, what I wanted to ask about was uh, your. I mean, obviously, you're in a brand new job. Yes. And in a, in a big, high, very high profile way. Uh, luckily, catching a very big labor wave at the same time. Yeah. And I guess, what's it been like in terms of, has there been something that's been, there must have been some things that have been surprising. Hopefully some, some positive surprises, maybe some less positive surprises. Yeah. Any, anything that you might want to comment on? Well, the general election was a surprise. I wasn't expecting that to happen in the summer. But, right. you know, the yeah. fact that we are now all in, kind of, in tandem will help us. And that, just that certainty, I think, for the future, the fact that we all know uh, who's going to be where. We've had a lot of change uh, yeah. in, the, in, the last, in the last few years, positive and negative. But I think the biggest um, positive surprise, from my point of view, has actually been the wave of support that we've had for you know, this idea, this concept of devolution. You know, we mm. want to empower people to make more of their own decisions, and mm. people support that. And I've always known that, you know, for example, the business community, they've pushed us to do it. Mm. You know, they've pushed politicians and said, well, this is what we want. Yeah. But actually, you know, if I go out and say, talk to me about transport, the response is massive. And it's not always positive, yeah. because people won't always like everything you're doing but the response is massive, and that's mm -hmm. what we want. We want people to talk to us, the positive and the negative, as long nice. as it's constructive and not rude. <laughs> <laughs> Don't swear at me, it's not nice. <laughs> um, one of the things that struck me as well is that obviously you're part of a continuing wave of devolution that yes. we've mentioned, Andy, a couple times now. But it struck me as that, is there an increasing sense of sort of camaraderie between Yes. All the regional mayors. Yes. Would you say yes? Okay. Absolutely. So we work together across uh, across the regions uh, and look for commonality and lobby for more powers yeah. into our regions. You know, okay. we're um, on a really steep trajectory now. So we're going to have the English devolution bill. We'll go through Parliament in the coming months, and that will define what the next stages look like. Mm. That includes things like single settlement. So without getting too techy, before we've had devolved mayors, but you know the the government would say, this is how much you've got for housing, and this is how much you've got for transport, and this is how much you've got for skills. All of that goes, and we're going to get single settlements so we can make our own decisions and prioritize the things that are going to be most important to us, and that's going to be huge for wow. us and for other regions. Yeah. At the same time, more areas coming on stream. And then I think my favorite bit is that, you know, I'm proudly northern. Uh, I think that we need to really uh, boost the north, and I think that that is a little bit of an emotional argument about the fact that you know sometimes the North has been a bit left behind and a bit neglected, but actually it's an economic argument about the fact that you know if we put the right investment in the right places, the opportunity is massive. Mm. Uh, you know the growth that we'll get is massive. The the the, the payback is huge. Mm. And so as a group of Northern mayors, the seven, we've come together and said, look, we want to be the Great North, yeah. and we're going to act as a block, and we're unapologetically going to go out in the world and and you know really sell this concept of of mm. North of the North of Northern Pride, and I think that's, you know, that's really? going to be fundamental to our future. So leveling up actually is going to start happening? Well, we're going to call it something else. <laughs> uh, I think if I go out there into Durham and I say, what do you think of leveling up? People just go, oh. Um, and understandably, because it just hasn't happened. But, but yeah, yeah, we do need, we do need some of that. And I think, okay. 
you know, some of that's going to be about getting serious with yeah. government and, and being really clear that this is, you know, this is not a, a polite request. This right. is absolutely this is the fundamental of what has to happen. Yeah. Now, uh, one thing I didn't uh, note to the audience is that, uh, so first, uh, thank you. You've pretty much literally just got off a plane as, <laughs> as of yesterday from a transatlantic flight and, yes. and shoehorned us into your day. So thank you for that. Thank you. But it also means you have um, a unique perspective about this. My, my daughter tells me there's an election happening over there soon as no, well. No, there's yes. not. You didn't hear about this. I don't, Sorry. And honestly. <laughs> what, so what, what, where were you? And, so and I, um, I started in Colorado. So I, for the first time since, tw I've, I haven't had two weeks off since 2018. Oh, this is personal holiday. Yeah, this oh, is sorry. a holiday. Okay, yeah. yeah, I've been on holiday. Um, and so I started in Colorado and made my way through to uh, Arizona wow. um, with kind of a few big cities in between. Wow. And it's quite hard to gauge, I think, okay. which way it's going to go. I mean, from our point of view, and I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm going to take a punt and suggest that there's probably no Trump supporters in this audience. Um, I don't know. If, if you are, just maybe just keep it quiet. I think... Um, <laughs> I can say that Kamala Harris cannot, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think um, I, I think from our point of view, you know, we look across the pond, and it's so important to the whole world what's going to mm. happen there, and it feels like a no-brainer of a choice, but it, it it clearly isn't to the people yeah. of the U.S. and you yeah. know the the electioneering in particularly those swing states. So I spent some time in Nevada and in Arizona. Yeah. And oh my word, you know, intense, it, it is, you know, it? it's intense. Yeah. You know, the advertising, the, the road signs, the, the, mm. the lot. And it's actually in many respects, what it has done is, I'm slightly dodging your question because I don't know who's going to win. But mm. what it has done is it, it is opened my eyes. I think there is a, a new negativity that seeped into British politics mm. that I don't like. Yeah. You know, the, the way that people talk to and about politicians, the way that politicians talk to and about each other, the way that sometimes politicians talk out about the public and, you know, different types of people. Mm. I think we've got to be really careful about that rhetoric because, mm. you know, not only does it present a global view of who we are, but also it really impacts people's day to day. Yeah. That ship has sailed in the U.S. Oh man! And I think it's something we really need to be mindful of of not adopting. You know, we've got to keep our politics in a space where we can. You know, we we should be seeking respect and dignity, and we should be respectful of um, of each other yeah. and, and of all everybody. You know? Uh, well, listen, thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you. But the jet lag again. will keep me up all night on Tuesday night, so I'll be able to watch it. <laughs> um, well, yeah, anyways, thank you again. And, and, and really, I should, one thing I should add is that while the, the event is called Bright Ideas Gathering, it really is about ideas going into action. Exactly. And, and you have got a, a great position. You're in a great position to do that, so we look forward to hearing a lot more in the future. Thank you, and thanks for having me. Thank, thank you. you.